Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Five Drinks at Midnight, the show where we bring the questions, guests bring the drinks, and we try to wrap up before midnight. Today we're talking to Avalon Unahas from Kentucky Creek. But before we do, like, subscribe, hit all the bells, the whistles, everything. It really help us out. Let's get started. Or midnight, five drinks, five questions, midnight, whatever comes first. As we can see, it's a beautiful Sunday day, but we'll try to drink till midnight. Nothing wrong with a little day drinking. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm fantastic. Uh, you actually get to experience my parents' uh, dining room. We call it the Africa Room. Excellent. Uh, normally, nice. I'm in my Airstream for these tastings because I live out of it, but my generator's been on the fritz, so uh, it's really hot outside. Yeah, I was so going to say. I'm, I'm inside today. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, it's really, it's like 90-something out, so like being in an aluminum can does not sound like a good idea. So Yeah, it's like a little oven. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't cook it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, our, our first question is really, what are we drinking first? So really, that's the most important thing. All right. So um, Catoctin Creek, we do 100% rye whiskey out of, like I said, Percival, Virginia. So um, Becky and Scott are the owners. Becky is a chemical engineer, so naturally she does all of our distilling for us. Uh, Scott was a tech guy who had a big love of whiskey, just not so much his job. So about 14 years ago, they took a trip out to Roundstone, Ireland. So that's our little homage on there. Um, and just kind of get away from it all, tour a bunch of the distilleries, drink a lot of whiskey. And after doing so, Scott had the drunken aha moment. He's like, wait a minute, my wife's a scientist. She could totally make whiskey. I hate my job. Let's open up a distillery. So Becky's whole thing is like, hey, like I can make amazing whiskey. Just make sure that we make money while we're doing it. So that's, that's his job now, is he makes sure we make all of our money so he can live the dream of owning a distillery. Excellent. I mean, I think that's everybody's dream. I mean, I know after I've been to Ireland many times, like, I was like, I want to make whiskey. I think that's, like, the most <laughs> important thing ever, so. And, yeah, so we do 100% rye. And part of the reason why we do is we wanted to stay historically accurate to the area. So George Washington, rye being his whiskey of choice out of Mount Vernon, we're not very far from Mount Vernon, out in uh, uh, Percival, Virginia. So we wanted to kind of stay historically accurate to that. So all of our rye is sourced locally. We get it out of two farms in Virginia and one out of Pennsylvania. Um, and um, again, 100% rye. So there's no corn, no barley, no nothing in there. All 100% rye, all made in-house at our distillery. Uh, that actually used to be an old Buick dealership. It's very, very cool. Uh, the side that they work on the cars is actually where the distillery is. And then the old showroom is where our tasting room is. Um, one of the, so do you want to pour yourself a little bit? Of sure, the absolutely. Wh which one are we with the, the, uh, Let's start with the 80 proof. So the 80 is what Becky refers to as the porch sipper. So just very easy drinking. Um, the, one of the main things that sets our rye apart, um, outside of being hundred percent rye is that we do not chill filter. So for those of you who are not familiar with chill filtering, it's an old school practice that originated way back when, mainly for cosmetic reasons. So for instance, if this was to get cold, our whiskey would get cloudy. And what that cloudiness is, is the natural fats and oils separating from the alcohol. And so they would see that and be like, oh, that looks dirty, we don't like it, so they'd filter it out. But fat, oil, that's flavor. You wanna keep that in there. Just because it might look a little funny when it's cold doesn't mean it's not gonna taste good. So we like to keep all that stuff in there. You're not going to have just dry pasta. You're going to put some butter or oil or something on there to give it some little oomph. So we kind of think the same way when it comes to making our whiskey. Cheers. Cheers. I love these glasses, by the way. So the, the name of the glass is called the Tua glass. So it is an Irish, it's an Irish drinking glass. Uh, Tua in Gaelic means family or nation, which is what we become now after we day drink together. So like... <laughs> It's my favorite sipping glass, so you can't go wrong with that. But Yeah, no, these are beautiful. 
Um, oh, and the other thing. So we are um, aging. You just mentioned aging. So we age our whiskey for two years in 30 gallon barrels. Um, so some people, you know, when they hear two years, they think, oh, that's really young. We use a barrel that's about half the size of a traditional barrel, which is either a 59 or, or a 53 gallon barrel. So we use a 30 gallon barrel. So half, half the time, essentially. Usually in those barrels, about four years, you only really need about two and some change um, in a 30 gallon barrel. Uh, one of the kind of fun things about why we use 30 gallon barrels, it has a lot to do with Becky. Uh, so Becky's about my height, about 5'10", uh, and she herself is a very hands-on distiller and wanted a barrel that she herself could knock around the distillery and not have to worry about, you know, having a bunch of dudes, you know, or a forklift for every time she needs to move it. So she's, again, yes, very hands-on. You see her in the summertime on a day like today. She's in her shorts. She's all bruised up because she's kicking the barrel around all over the place. Making sure that we make as much whiskey as possible. Excellent. Well, then, all right, on to question one, then, is really kind of how'd you get started in the spirits industry? I know it's a lame question, but everybody loves a good origin story. So I have been in the spirits industry for 10 years. I've been in the restaurant industry for about 14 so I'm 31. So I started out as, you know, a server and a host, you know, when I was younger at a, in Percival, actually, uh, right around the corner from the distillery, because I went to high school there, uh, and worked my way up as soon as I turned 21 over at Vintage 50, that used to be in Leesburg. So again, very close, staying in this area. Um, I started bartending, and then from bartending, I got a job at a wine, for wine sales, um, did that for a little while in like uh, in Northern Virginia area, Arlington, Alexandria and such. And then from there, I started working at, it's, it's, it's a long, long one. <laughs> <laughs> I started working at a, um, a members only cigar lounge uh, club called Iris in Tyson's Corner. So I was there for about two years. I um, helped organize like wine dinners and all kinds of stuff like that. And then I ended up getting hired at a tobacco company for sales. So I'm hitting all the vices here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> all right, yep, yep. Um, and in, from the tobacco company, we used to do a bunch of festivals and things like Bourbon and Beyond, or uh, sorry, uh, the beer, bourbon and barbecue festivals and stuff out in Northern Virginia. And I made friends with a girl named Jade who worked for Southern Wine and Spirits. And so I would hang out with them, got along with them great, and then started working for Southern for a couple of years. And then from Southern, I worked for a beer distributor from the beer distributor, I had left bartended part-time and actually had my own company for a while. I was doing George's Bloody Mary mix out of Maryland, um, Old Best Head uh, Brewing out of Virginia, and then Double Cross Vodka, which is a Slovakian vodka. So okay. it was nice, you know, Bloody Mary's and vodka, already had that to do the sampling, and then beer is just like a nice little added, you know, boost. Yep, there you uh, go. Yeah, exactly. And so about, it was, I started with Katakin in January of... 2019 and so in like November 2018 it was kind of like a little freaky because I at that point I was like I'm working a lot bartending and having my own business but I'm not making all that much money right now I didn't even say it to anybody I was just like an internal thought I was like maybe I need to start looking not but like a week or so later I get an email from um Lauren Barrett who actually used to be our GM at Catoctin and we worked with each other at Vintage 50 a couple of years before. And she's like, hey, so do you know anybody who might be interested in taking over this sales position for DC, Maryland, and Delaware? And I was like, yes, please sign me up. So um, I had, after that, about a couple of weeks later, I had a phone call chat for about 30, 45 minutes with Scott. Uh, and then he had me come in the next week, took a tour around and gave me the job on the spot. Um, well, first, again, didn't even get into really talk, like whiskey is fucking amazing. So it's first time having it. Okay. Um, awesome. and uh, I really enjoy it the I'm getting a really great flavors uh honestly like the uh really hit the Irish kind of tones out of it so like it, it's Christmas cakey it's all good it's <laughs> spicy it's so damn good uh so again love that that is just yeah amazing. it's kind of the the 80 proof is is kind of you know if, if you if you're a bourbon drinker and you prefer if you like you know a high rye bourbon 
this is probably one that you'll gravitate towards just because even though it is 100% rye, you're not getting that big black pepper kick that usually, you know, a lot of other ryes tend to be a little stringent and you get it in the back of the throat. Ours is more of like that cinnamon baking spice type of spice that you get with it. And it's got a nice little sweetness because we, of the high quality rye that we use, we have all organic rye. Um, and obviously, you know, it being in a different region versus some other distilleries where they're sourcing theirs from Canada or MGP. Uh, and no, no bad, you know, blood with MGP, just there's a time and a place, but ours just tastes a lot, of, a lot different compared to some of the ryes that are coming out of there. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's got a nice sweetness, a very natural sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet. Yeah. Now, again, you classified it as a good sipper and it absolutely is like that is on my second pour already, but yeah, it's just, already, it's so, it is a good sipper. Like this is just like a good sit on your porch and, mm -hmm. you know, at night, like this is just a good, it, it's a good sipper. It's absolutely mm -hmm. what it is. So I'm down it's with it. It's not going to hurt you too bad, especially like, you know, porch sipper on a nice day, even on a hot day, it's not going to be too aggressive and, you know, light you up a little bit. Yeah. All right. But the sippers edition, on the other hand. <laughs> that's going to, that's going to fire us up. A little bit, but in a good way, in a good All right. way. Excellent. Well, again, I love a good higher proof. So we're that. So that's, I mean, that's question one. Super easy, no pain, just like ripping nope. the bandaid off, we're in. <laughs> All right, so I'm on to question two, drink two. What are we All drinking? Right. I'm drinking the 92 proof, our distiller's edition. What? So as I was saying, you know, the, the 80 is what Becky refers to as the porch sipper. At the distillery, the 92 is what we refer to as our shift drink. That's so it. after a hard day working at the distillery, you just pour yourself a nice little glass of the 92 and everything. Is like, I want to get, I want to get hired. So do what? Sounds like I want to come get hired. I, I can do <laughs> floors or do whatever. It's a so. good time. It's a good time during the initial shutdown. Um, like I can't speak highly enough about Katakton. It's absolutely a wonderful company to work for. I plan on staying with them as long as I'll have me, hopefully retiring with them, like that type of level of commitment. Um, they actually let us uh, come. So me and John, the uh, Virginia sales rep, instead of letting us go when everything was getting shut down, they actually had us come work in the distillery. So we were bottling uh, for, you know, four or five months um, until things started opening up again. So I joke that, you know, me and John were like the highest paid bottlers in the history of Catoctin because we were still getting our paycheck. We were still getting our commission from the stores and, you know, just it's, it was, it was a really cool experience to kind of see how the day to day works at the distillery versus like me as a sales rep, I'll just rush in, grab my sample bottles, juices out. And then, you know, I don't see anybody until, you know, a Christmas party or something. Yeah. Um, so we all became very, very close uh, during that time. Uh, the hands, when we were doing hand sanitizer, uh, we did that for about a month and a half, and we had more people from the tasting room come on. It wasn't just me and John. Uh, it was basically everybody just so we could bust it out as quickly as possible. And that's where a lot of the shenanigans came in. So me and John, yeah, it's fun and all, but you add, you know, another five whiskey drinkers, five, six whiskey drinkers, and there is debauchery to be had. That Lots sounds like a great time. So uh, it was it was awesome. We we all I finally got to learn everybody's name. <laughs> Instead of being like, oh, I think I remember that person's name. Oh, I'm not quite sure. But we all became very close and we still have a Facebook group uh, chat that we is active every single day, almost every hour of the day of us just, you know, bullshitting, just, you know, talking about whatever's going on. A lot of, you know, uh, fart jokes style. We all yeah. kind of reverted to our, our inner teenager after yep, the yep. whole experience. So, but, you know, that's how family works, right? Yep. Again, <laughs> You can't make fun of yourselves, and what, what's the point of having people around? So exactly. Uh, uh, so, so the ninety-two proof. This so is. the main difference between the eighty and the ninety-two, and even our cask, um, is the proof and the barrel. So the eighty, and then our cask proof, which you don't have. Um, that that cask usually sits around one hundred and sixteen. Uh, those are it's all single barrel, so it's either going to be a Virginia or a Minnesota oak barrel. As for the 92, it's 100% Virginia oak. Okay. So we, it just, it, we just found at 92 proof in Virginia oak, it just hits that nice little soft spot and it just, it's it, something different happens. Uh, you get a little bit more spice. I've actually had more people, a lot of people tell me that this is actually smoother than the 80 proof. 
even though it's a little bit higher. It's just, it, you've got a lot more flavor that comes through. It's a little bit more chewy, um, more rem reminiscent of a, you know, of a, a traditional rye, if you will. Yep. So it just, just hits different. No, I love, I like it. I, I, I think I like this a little bit better than the 80, but like this, again, nothing wrong with the 80, but this is just, there's something real nice about this one. It's got a good- like toppy too. on the nose. Yeah. Mm. This is our go-to. And then we also got a 94 in the Wine Enthusiast. Um, the beginning of 2020, before everything went to hell, <laughs> we were all excited. We're like, we got a 94 in the Wine Enthusiast. The, the 80 got a 90 and our cast group got a 91. We're like, it's going to be a great year. And then like two months later, well, you know what happened. We will yeah. go there. All right, I so will say the, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, ahead. like, I will, the alcohol industry is a good industry, like in sales at least, is a good industry to be in because the one thing I think about, you know, when you're sad, probably having a drink. When you're happy, probably having a drink. When you're bored, probably drinking. Yeah. So our numbers have, I were higher last year than they were the first year that I worked for the company. Yeah, absolutely. People, I, I don't doubt it. Cause yeah, like, I mean, I, I, I've come to like my collection now is full, like way back. Like that was out in the living room on a bar cart when like COVID started. Cause again, most of this, the times you're outside, you're out drinking, you're not mm -hmm. at home drinking. And like, so like I was, and then all of a sudden like that just kind of flowed over. So then I start putting everything behind there. And then next thing you know, I got bottles stocked on bottles and now I got something <laughs> called floor whiskey, which is just whiskey that sits on the floor. So like I got no other places for it. I got a shelf here full. I got a shelf behind me full. But yeah, like I'm, I, but yeah, like I never it, had like that much whiskey at home. And now like all I have is just whiskey yeah, upon whiskey it, in my hair. And my it's office. crazy yeah. when I, so I just started doing like liquor store tastings and everything. And normally I would sell out of the 80 proof, just like, Ooh, no, nothing left. I'd be like, you need to bring like, you know, three or four cases in for this. Cause this is going to sell like nobody's business. America, we have all become alcoholics oh, yeah. because they're like, Oh, that 80 proof. Yeah. It's good. But then 92, we want that higher proof. And I, every tasting that I've gone to, I, again, used to sell the like a ridiculous amount of the 80 and not to say the 80 isn't delicious, but everybody's palate has gotten a little bit more, uh, Attain down. I'm not quite sure how to word it, but they prefer the higher proof now. Yeah. And they have no problem spending the money for it. It's not that it's crazy much more expensive. It's maybe about $10, $15 more versus, you know, like a $35 bottle. But yeah, like the last tasting I did, literally all I sold was the 92 and maybe like one of the 80s, which is, I'm just like, okay, all right. The palettes have changed in, in, the, in this area and I'm here for it. Yeah. I wanted, I've always tried to push the 92 as much as possible and is doing it for itself now. So that out of question too. So you guys have been around or Catoctin has been around for 11 years. Uh, I saw on your website that you guys actually had a, uh, a video on how to pronounce the word. What in all of your travels, what is the strangest pronunciation of Catoctin, I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, but yeah. No, you it, got it, Catoctin, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Catocin? Okay. Where did you just say add in letters in there? I was like, that's, are you, can you read? Like, are you just, mm? I mean, I, so I understand the issue with Catoctin. So it's a Native American term that means a plethora of deer. So the consonants and vowels and everything in the order that they're put are, you know, the English language doesn't really, in our brains, doesn't make sense. So you're like Katosin, Katakin is the one, those are the two that we get a lot, but it is in fact Katoctin. Um, so the Katoctin Creek and mountains are split between both Virginia and Maryland. Um, because, okay, like I said, it was a Native American area. So like, that was their land until the white man came and like, nah, we're going to call this Virginia. We're going to call this Maryland. We'll, we'll keep contacting in there, but this is, mm -mm, it, it, we're making states here. <laughs> so that that's kind of, you know, the whole idea be behind, you know, calling us Catoctin. Uh, But yeah, we've had a lot of bastardizations of the name over the years. And even people who live in the Catoctin area still don't really know how to pronounce it, which is funny. I was like, I'm from New Jersey originally. So like the fact that I can figure it out pretty quickly, and that's, that's a big deal. <laughs> that works. On to question three. All right. 
All right, what are we what are we doing? Oh, I'm just gonna keep on the 92 because I forgot to make cocktails. Oh, all right. You talk about going out. You said you had friends in the industry. Is there one rule that you have while you're out drinking that you have to live that you personally live by? So, like for example, don't do shots. No drinking after midnight. Uh, tequila is terribly bad. Uh, is there is there one rule that you live by when it comes to like out? past industry night unfortunately i don't know <laughs> i i just go where the night takes me and right. go by feel uh i usually stay out pretty late because i try to maximize as much so especially when i'm traveling i usually stay out pretty late because i want to take advantage of the time that i'm there to you know hit as many bars and restaurants and meet as many people as I can that, you know, for the next time when I come out, you know, network and, you know, if they know somebody at a restaurant or if they work at a restaurant, kind of set something up. So, yeah, I don't really have, I mean, the only thing that I won't do is fireball. Okay. It's gross. <laughs> it's, mm -mm. Can't do fireball. I mean, and that being said, if somebody buys me a shot of fireball, I will do it with them, but it is definitely not something I'm doing by choice. Gotcha. Um, normally when I'm at a bar, if they don't carry Katakton and I'm just kind of like hanging out, it's I'm a beer and a shot of tequila girl. Okay. Um, if they have a really cool whiskey selection, of course, I'm going to explore that and then try and get my stuff in afterwards. Uh, but my, yeah, that's usually yeah beer and, and some tequila or beer and some Katakton. So I can sustain, unless it's again, you know, a good whiskey bar or a cocktail bar. Awesome. But, All right. Yeah, uh, no, no, no rules. No okay. rules. <laughs> I mean, I live by myself. <laughs> Say what? I guess maybe just to behave myself. Oh, like, true. The, if I ever get so drunk to where I start to slur my words, that's where I cut myself off. Okay. And it's like, yep, yeah, no, nope, Avalon don't need no more. It is water and Uber time. There you go. But and I've been doing this for a long time, and that very, very rarely happens. All right. Maybe in the past 10 years, a grand total of three times. All right. How about this one then? If you weren't uh, having Katakton, what would you be drinking? You said a beer in a shop, but like what, what, if, if there is no, uh, like what's your go-to whiskey other than uh, your brand? My go-to whiskey. Let's see. Um, well, I just got myself a bottle of the old Forrester um, hundred percent or the, the rye, the hundred proof nice. the one that it's like $25 a bottle, but in a lot of States you can't find it anywhere. I found it in Delaware. So I've been sipping on that recently. Um, I am really bad. Like I know I used to sell a lot of whiskey when I was with Southern and I used to, I know a good amount about whiskey, but I'm such a brand whore that like, I don't like to cheat on my whiskey. I got like, you. so it's usually like, I wouldn't be selling Contactin if it wasn't one of my favorite products, like without a doubt. And when I was working with Southern Wine and Spirits and they sold it, I sold the crap out of it. I absolutely loved the, the, the product and then got lucky enough to, um, to work with them. Uh, but I'm trying to see, like I was a big one back in the day, Buffalo Trace was my go-to. Um, trying to think, of course, Blanton's is, you know, it's the, I, I was drinking Blanton's before it became almost impossible to find like you know, a Pappy or something like when it was just very readily on in the ABC stores. Yep. And so it's, it's crazy to me now to see like how I'm like, it's a great bourbon. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just like, huh. Like I remember it was just like, yeah, it wasn't flying off the shelves, but supply and demand, there's no supply. There's going to be a demand. Yep. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's outside of Katakton. Like I said, uh, I'm a big fan of old Forrester. Um, and yeah. And then, uh, you know, the, the good old classic Blanton's. Gotcha. All right. So, cool. Yeah. That's it. right. very, very, you know, not, not exciting answer, but I am very much a very loyal whiskey drinker when it comes to like rye, when it comes to uh Katakton. Okay. Is, is there, is there a spirit, like you said beer tequila, like is, is there, let's say whiskey, like, is there something that you just go to if you, if you can't yeah. have? The, um, as, so like spirits in general, I always joke with people, like if I wasn't selling whiskey, I'd be selling tequila. I absolutely adore and love tequila. When I worked with um, Southern Wine and Spirits, they had a huge tequila portfolio and I got to learn a lot um, about it. And so my, so I have three kind of like tiered favorites. If you're looking for an actually pretty decent 
well. Um, tequila Exotico is a great go-to. Um, if they only they come in 750s and liters, only the Blanco and Añejo for like $20, $25. So $20 at the ABC store for the 750, like $25 for the liter, which is a no-brainer. I'm like, why the hell am I no, I'm getting the liter bottle. Because uh, I remember when I was working for Southern, I was tasting through all the, all the uh, tequilas and I was like, there's no way this is a $19 bottle of tequila. Like, I think I got it mixed up with some of my other samples and like poured it out, poured myself another one. I was like, well, damn. Okay. All right. Very respectable. It's not like, you know, drinking gasoline. All right. Uh, I guess the mid-level one would be El Mayor tequila, uh, which it's, it's another smaller um, company. It, it's just really great mid-level bang for your buck. I think it goes for like maybe 20 nine to thirty five dollars a bottle for either the 80 or the um sorry for the uh, uh blanco or the reposado somewhere in that age range so just you know just a good easy drinking uh whiskey uh, sorry uh tequila but my favorite is chinaco tequila it's so that one is um it's one of the only uh tequilas that is licensed outside of the regions of jalisco mexico so if you have, you know, this is Mexico, over here's the ocean, Mexico over here, they grow their uh, agave in sand, like right near the ocean. So you get like a lot of that like briny flavors to it. So imagine like if a sweet scotch and a tequila made a baby, that would be Chinaco. It's okay. one of the coolest tequilas I've had um, in a while. And it, I just, when I, when I had it for the first time, I absolutely fell in love with it and I, that if I ever see it anywhere, I'm definitely getting a pour of it. On the question four, I think I'm going to do another pour of the. Do that one. 92. Can't go wrong. <laughs> Wait, the 80. Uh, question four uh, comes actually from your partner in crime, John. Uh, okay. uh, so I reached out to him to get some dirt. Very loyal. Didn't give me anything. <laughs> Uh, but uh, he told me to ask you about your uh, acclaimed uh, Netflix and chill uh, events that you were doing. Uh, he said that they're award winning, uh, and so that I should ask you about those. So it was our Netflix and Katak Tales okay. that we did. So during COVID, um, it, when we were working at the distillery, you know, me and John are both very much so extroverted. We're both Scorpios, so we're very, very similar. And as salespeople, we're very, out, we're, again, extroverted. We're used to being around people. So in the distillery, uh, it was just me and John, and Scott noticed that we were getting really itchy. Like we're, you know, not used to just doing assembly line work, and like we needed something more creative to keep us sane. So Scott had the idea of, you know, after everything just anything video social media was like exploding and Scott's like okay let's do Netflix and Katak Tales which essentially was us doing focusing on a show that binge worthy show on Netflix and pairing it with cocktails so we would dress up do a little skit in the beginning and then go into the cocktails that we did we can okay. start so Welcome to the ninth episode of Netflix and Katak Tales. I am Linda. It's my lovely, handsome husband, uh, Bob, over here. And then my beautiful boy, baby Jean. I make noises. And then Tina. Uh, she makes noises. So it was, they were a lot of fun. We did, um, we did Tiger King. We did that 70s show. We did Bob's Burgers. Um, we did Space Force. Uh, my dad was actually on, he came in as a guest because he wrote a book about Mars called the Sidonia Codex Reflections from Mars. Uh, he's actually been on uh, Ancient Aliens and Beyond Belief and what was the other one? The Truth is Out There. He actually just filmed an, another one from The Truth is Out There. So uh, yeah, so he came in and talked about his book and we did cocktails based around, you know, Space Force. Uh, I'm trying to think what was it. We did one for um, Stranger Things, okay, which was which was very funny because uh, so Denise had never seen it. She was our she's our tasting room manager. So it was me, John, and Denise. Denise again, she's never seen the, the show, which is crazy. I'm like, what else are you doing when you go home? Like we can't all necessarily hang out. Like if you're not watching Netflix. 
So at one point, yeah, I was 11, John was um, uh, Hopper, and I take the, she dressed up as a Demogorgon. I took her down and she didn't know, she's like, Demogorgon noises, and just like <laughs> falls down. <laughs> It, it ended up working out. It was really funny. Um, but yeah, no, those those were a blast and they definitely kept us. On to our fifth and final question. Okay. Five drinks down, not even close to midnight, sun still shining. <laughs> Comes down to a flip of the coin question. You have your Whiskey Wednesday coin? I do. Excellent. So the coin will tell us the answer. You can flip it, you can spin it, you can do whatever you want. But before we do that, I'm going to do another pour. Keep switching them up. I didn't realize that it was two-sided. <laughs> because it, it's it's the weight of a challenge coin. So that's why I was like, what is this? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's, that's, it. that's where it kind of came from, which is, it, it's just our challenge coin. So mm -hmm. again, and it will help you make important life decisions. So now like when I you're on the that. road, you'd be like, do I go left or right? And you just, Flip the coin, so like it's always. Do I stay out at this bar, or do I move on to a next one? Exactly. Do I go home, or always fuck no. But yeah, so <laughs> I go home. The bars closed. Now that they're all the way open, we go home to the bars closed. Yeah. Give them as much patronage as possible. Until they kick us out, we don't go home. And even if they try to kick us out, maybe we just stay outside and drink. So it just yeah. What <laughs> mm. oh, that's so good. All right, so. Fifth and final question comes down to the coin, but talk about how John, how he's your brother, how he's a partner in crime, but is it true you'd kill him for a meatball sub? I don't even need a football coin for that. Probably, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll do it anyway. We'll, we'll see if the uh, what the coin says. Oh, it said fuck yeah. All yes, right, I would. Excellent. Yes, I would. Uh, during our, our social stalking, we found out that you're obsessed with the meatballs. So, like, I figured it's a good way just to end the night. So, that's uh, it. It's, I, I mean, I've actually had a meatball sub named after me uh, with my good guys over at Rebellion in uh, in Virginia. They used to be based out of DC, but after COVID and everything, they're solely Virginia based now. Soon to open up their um, Leesburg uh, location in the fall. So they called. They did a meatball sub based off of my love of them and called it the Airstream instead of like a sub. They called it the Airstream. They would have called it Avalon, but their Arlington, uh, Virginia location is backed up to an Avalon um, uh, uh, apartment. So they're like, yeah, people might get a little confused and why we call it that. So they just went with the Airstream, which I think was very suitable. Excellent. Well, that is it. Five questions down, five questions answered. Hell of a good day drink. Well, thank it's you. been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for your you. time. And again, if I'm ever in the DC area, I will be looking you up. Or if you ever bring your Airstream up to New York City in Brooklyn, I don't know where we park it, but anyway. <laughs> I'll station it out in New Jersey with some friends and then make my way up. There you go. Sounds perfect. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate thank it. You. Have a great day. Thank you so much Cheers. for joining us. Cheers. No problem. Thank you.